السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أهلا وسهلا بكم طلاب الأعزاء طلاب الفرقة السابعة بالمجمع التكنولوجي المتكامل بالأميرية أهلا بكم في كورس اللغة الإنجليزية في ثاني محاضراتنا معكم دكتور محمود جابر First of all I'd like to welcome you all and I'd like to begin this session by some discussion questions that I'd like you to think of and try to express answers to these questions in English in order to improve your ability to speak English. Okay? Let's have the first question. Think of the expression, too good to be true. What do you think it means? Have your time. We all know that the word too, T-O-O, uh, means much more, much more than very. Okay, it's an exaggerated form of very. So when we say something is too good to be true, this means that it's too good to be believable. We can't believe it, okay? It's something that uh, offers itself or sells itself as nice, good, fine, but to the degree that you cannot believe it, okay? This is the meaning, in fact, of this expression. So too good to be true, mean that it, it cannot be believed okay it is something very nice that you can't believe it is uh, realistic second question have you ever been a victim of an unreliable business first of all i'd like to concentrate on the idea of unreliable business uh, many times you are watching TV and you find an ad or you watch an ad that pops at uh, your face and you find that this ad is offering you a certain commodity, a certain kind of thing uh, with many merits, too much merits, too many merits that you can't believe it's true. However, you believe it and you decide to buy the commodity advertised. When you get the, uh, the thing that you uh, uh, decided to buy, you find that all such merits, advantages, and privileges that uh, the ad offered, okay, are about uh, nothing, okay? They are vacuum, uh, they are not real, okay? So you, d you discover that you are a victim. Okay. Have you ever been a victim of an unreliable business like that before? Have you ever bought something from the internet and you discovered on receiving it that it is not as you imagined? This is a question directed to you. Try to think of this and try to express the answer in English. Okay. Now, which of these situations seem reliable and which of course seem not reliable or unreliable first one a website offers a free international phone service okay while looking into the internet and uh, browsing the internet sites you find that a website offers you free international phone calls yeah for example you can have an ad telling you that you can <coughs> call your friends, for example, uh, <coughs> the U.S. for free. Do you think that this is reliable? Do you think that this uh, this can be true? Do you think that the merit offered here can be uh, realistic? It's up to you. Try to think and to try to decide for yourself, okay, whether it is reliable or unreliable. Two, a company sends you an email asking to confirm your credit card details lie. Okay, a company selling or advertising for any commodity, any software program, for example, okay, sends you an email asking you to confirm your credit card details. This means that you are going to fill in a certain form giving your uh, credit card details. Do you think that this is reliable? Do you think that this is trustworthy? Do you think that can, you can trust this company, for example, and uh, register your information, your very private financial information on this website or uh, via this email? Or do you think that this is a fraud? 
that, for example, you will uh, be a victim of unreliable kind of companies. Third, someone on the street asks you to sign a petition that requires your address and phone number. While walking in the street, you uh, find someone who asks you to uh, sign a certain kind of complaint or something like that that requires your address and phone number. What would you do? Would you easily uh, write down your address and the phone number or do you think that this is unreliable and maybe uh, you may be uh, a victim of you may feel, fall a prey to uh, uh, a manipulation process? What would you do? This is the question. Four. A television ad offers a set of knives worth $300 just for $75. Do you think that this is reliable? Decide for yourself. And do not forget to express your decision. I speak about your the rationale beyond the, your decision in English. Okay? Now for the second uh, part of the session, it's about writing, okay? And today, inshallah, we are going to discuss the idea of writing a paragraph, how to write a good paragraph, how to write a well-developed paragraph. But first of all, we need to answer, or we need to know some important definitions, okay? How to write a paragraph. What is a paragraph? A paragraph, is a group of related sentences about one topic. This is the, mo the, 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 the most important point here, or the major keywords here are the idea of related. It's not just, they are not just uh, heterogeneous sentences or separate sentences like separate islands, but rather they are related to each other, united. About one topic, just one topic, not two topics or three topics or different messages, okay? So the first thing that we notice here is that the paragraph has some sort of unity and coherence. What about the main structure of the paragraph? How is the paragraph composed of? Okay, what is the structure of the paragraph? What does it consist of? This is what we are going to know in detail. Yes? The first part of the paragraph or the first sentence is called Topic sentence. Topic sentence. From its name, we know that this sentence is related to the idea of the topic you are discussing or the topic you are arguing for or against. It is the first sentence in the barrack. Sometimes it is the second, but most of the cases, we in most cases, we find that is a topic sentence uh, is located in the first in the position of the first sentence. Okay. So, the topic sentence is the first sentence in the paragraph that states the main point the writer is discussing, okay? Usually, when you decide to write a paragraph, you have a certain message in mind, you have a certain point of view that you want to express, you have a certain point that you want to deliver, you have a certain messages that you want to convey, okay? This is called the message, or the main point, or the pivotal idea, or the main idea, or the central theme that the writer is discussing. The first sentence in the paragraph, the topic sentence, okay, is the one that states directly and in a, a simple way this message that you are discussing in the rest of your paragraph. Number two, supporting details. Okay, again from the name, we have details. This means that I'm going to write about the details. And number two, these details are supporting. Supporting for what? They're supporting for the topic sentence itself. Okay, if the topic sentence states the main idea in condensation, in a nutshell, then the supporting details, or what we call the body of the paragraph, comes to support this message and stretches it, okay, or details it. So the supporting details or sentences are a group of sentences that support and details the main, a group of sentences that support and detail 
the main message of the paragraph, the main message of the paragraph, okay? Uh, of course, the supporting details may be examples, uh, maybe comparison and contrast, maybe statistics, maybe uh, people's point of view about the topic, maybe an exposition of the points of view of those who support and those who refuse, and so on. Number three, and the last part of the paragraph is the concluding sentence. Okay, what is the concluding sentence? It's the final sentence in the paragraph that usually restates the topic sentence or summarizes the main argument in a different in different words. So in the concluding sentence, we don't have something new, just a restatement of the topic sentence or uh, summarizing and summing up what I have stated in the topic sentence and the supporting details, the same ideas, but different language, different words, different style. Okay, and just to avoid what we call repetition in this time. Okay, uh, this is the uh, virtual structure of the paragraph. Now we are going to have a practical example of a, of a paragraph that we uh, can see these uh, abstract concepts, okay, applied to it or uh, developed in it. Okay, so. Kindly read the following paragraph and notice the previous divisions and concepts in it. Okay, this is the paragraph. Barefoot boy, barefoot boy. I had a scary experience when I was a young boy. One evening, while my parents were eating dinner, I was playing barefoot in the yard with my toys. Even now, I still remember the perfume of the flowers and the moisture of the grass. While I was sitting on the grass and playing with the truck, I looked up at the sky and my attention was distracted by the beauty of the stars. Then I felt something cold and smooth slide over my feet. I stayed perfectly still. But I looked down at my feet, then I saw a snake slowly slithering over my toes. I felt terrible and afraid, so my heart beat very fast. After the snake moved away, I screamed to my parents for help, and they captured the snake and took it away. The experience frightened me, and I never went outside barefoot again. Now this is a very simple paragraph about uh, a childhood experience, a childhood memory uh, of a boy, okay? I want you to concentrate now on the structure of this paragraph and uh, the concepts that we studied before about the, the structure of uh, an exemplary, exemplary paragraph, okay? That is the topic sentence, the supporting details, and the concluding sentence. Now the first sentence in this paragraph is, I had a scary experience when I was a young boy. I had a scary experience when I was a young boy. This is a topic sentence. When I just, as a reader, when I just read this sentence, I know which topic this writer is discussing and which message he is stating. I know that he is going to write about a scary, a frightening experience that he... Uh, Get, got into when he was a young boy. So I expect that the supporting details or the supporting sentences would be, or the body of the paragraph would be explaining and detailing and uh, elaborating this experience. And as such, he does. From the sentences that begins with one evening while my parents were eating dinner, to the one before the last, which ends with, and they captured the snake and took it away, these are called supporting details. Why? Because they support the main idea that the child had a scary experience. So these sentences uh, function is to prove that this experience was scary and frightening. Okay? So he wrote, for example, one evening when my parents were eating dinner, I was playing barefoot in the yard with my toys and so on. Then after he finished detailing and narrating what happened to him, 
okay? He wanted to uh, summarize what he have already wrote. So he wrote the concluding sentence. The sentence that summarizes everything but in different language. So he said, the experience frightened me. The experience, of course, of having a snake slithering over his, feet, his foot. The experience frightened me and I never went outside barefoot again. Again, as you uh, notice, there are no mess new messages introduced, no new topics developed, uh, no new ideas added, but just the same ideas discussed before in the supporting sentences and then the body of the paragraph, but, but in different language. Okay, but in different language. Okay, uh, I want you to uh, try to concentrate on the structure of this paragraph and this example and to try to know how each sentence supports and relates to the one coming before and the one coming after okay and please try to write a paragraph imitating this model okay this is the end of the session thank you and goodbye